hello there and uh, welcome again to my workshop. Um, today we're going to uh, make a fence and, um, and uh, position the fence on the, the table here in relation to the, the, the blade and the operation of this DeWalt radial saw. But first there's uh, quite a bit of setup that we have to do uh, because there's so many angles that this will cut at um, more than the normal type of drop saw um, as in you know we have this slide here uh, that, that actually carries the, 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 the blade that does the cut and the actual cut uh, is done from this position and drawn through this way uh, you can actually draw, go through that way as well. Um, but normal process is you pull the blade through. Um, so we need to get the, or I need to get the angle 90 degrees that way um, in relation to the, the fence at the back. I have to get the fence uh, 90 degrees in line with the, the, um, the blade. Uh, the blade needs to be checked for tram. In other words, is, it, is the blade cocked over this way? Is it going to come through at an angle? In other words, cut a, um, a, a slot much bigger than what the, the blade is. Uh, also, we have this angle this way as well, um, which we, we have a, a meter here, but we have to check to see if it's right and to see, well, I think you'll get the idea as I go on, and um, we'll get there. So the first thing I need to do is take this this cover off, so we can get at the blade. Okay. So as this is an old blade, the first job is to, well, check to see if it's running true. Um, I mean, you can sight it down and, and spin it here, and I can see that it's pretty true, but I want to check it anyway. So to do that, uh, the best piece of equipment, you, you can do it by putting something metal uh, 90 degrees to your ta table like this and, and just touching and, and it's, it's a difficult thing to do and sort of hear and feel the blade touching against something metal uh, but there's a more accurate way of doing it and that is with a DTI gauge this is a, a, a dial test indicator now this will measure precisely very very accurate um, whether this is bent or running out of true so we'll and it looks a bit of a peculiar setup it's on an old uh, vice actually of mine uh, I need something this is magnetic okay so I need something fairly solid as a base so it holds this firm and this is just a so sort of stop it rocking around so we'll just set this up now and I'll show you how it works so what you need to do is choose a tooth, any tooth, it doesn't really matter which one and just put a bit of tape on it just to mark it just to give you a bit of a marker and then just move the DTI gauge in so it's registering and then very carefully, you see a it's very, very responsive. Um, I don't think the camera's picking that up too well. There we go. See, you've only got to press down on the table. It just moves it very slightly. But this is a very, very small amount. Each division is one one hundredth of a millimeter. Uh, millimeter is, um, well, it's one twenty-fifth part of an inch. Okay, so we just will take this around, and that's move. That's a low point there. 
Oh, it's okay. So we pull this back. Okay, that's it. Well, pretty well. This is telling me that it's it's actually warped very, very slightly. Um, 0.2 of a millimeter, which is about um, what's that? About Twenty thousandth of an inch, which is you know fairly acceptable. Uh, we're we're only cutting wood here. Uh, you know we're not uh, cutting metal very. Accurately. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is hold the blade still and just move the carriage. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm moving the carriage back and forth across the blade and it's showing me that's still that same that same um, 0.2 of a millimeter. So that's telling me that the the radial arm itself is running fairly true. Um, and the, the actual whatever variation is actually in the blade itself. Well, we cannot do anything about that other than put a new blade on. And I very much doubt that a new blade would be any much better. So we're reasonably sure now that the the head or the the um, carriage here is running pretty true and accurate. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to check the distance between the carriage and the actual um, table itself just to see how parallel it is. Now what I've got is I've just got the blade touching there. Okay, so we'll bring it out here. And it's just about touching there. I should raise it up a little bit more. Okay, so it's just touching. And it's just touching. It's within within a few thousandths of an inch, so I'm really reasonably happy that that's this is running parallel now. So now what we need to do is to make the fence and set the fence up in relation to this blade and this arm. Now, there's a reason why I made these holes so large, so to put a screw through, is because I have some some movement, some some lateral movement. So I can move the thing around to get it square to to the blade. So I've got some adjustment. Okay. Now, it's not a difficult process to get the fence. 90 degrees from the blade. So what I've got is I've got a T-square here which is running parallel with the blade. Okay? 
and now I've got another set square which is set along the side of this giving me a straight edge that way so now what I'm going to do is clamp one end of this one end there now what I need to do is make sure just come very slightly this way Okay. Okay. So at the moment I'm just going to put um, one screw in this end and then recheck everything to make sure everything's you know, nothing is moved and, um, and then we can get it perfectly square. What I'm going to do is try and position this in the centre of that hole so I've got some movement. That's all it needs. So now I'm going to show you a neat little trick that this saw can do so I can get the other end of the, um, the fence exactly true. And that is... Rotate the motor and blade around 180 degrees and then reset. So now I can clamp the other end and know that it's exactly true to that blade. Okay, so this saw has another trick up its sleeve, and that is we can double check the, the fence in relation to the blade just by simply turning the blade 90 degrees and taking it up to the fence and then sighting it down and checking it. Perfect. So that tells us that fence is exactly 90 degrees and we should be able to get perfect cuts now on this um, Table so arrangement. now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just raise this up because we have to do a special job now um, but first of all I've got to put the, the guard back on So we're going to make a f the first cut with this um, saw now and what we're going to do, we're going to cut a slot through um, the top section of the back fence. Okay, so now we're going to lower it right the way down to the table. And uh, we're just going to take a nick in the table, just very, very slightly. I have to lift it up slightly first.
Just down very, very slightly, about a millimetre further down. I'll just take you in for a bit of a close-up here. So you can see now we have a track that the blade runs in all the way through to the very bottom corner. Oop. The bottom corner there of that fence. So now that will give us a very, very clean cut. Uh, very little fraying of uh, material and very very square. Okay so now we have our fence which is uh, 90 degrees in relation to the uh, the saw blade and the actual track or tram or um, sliding arm of the DeWalt radial arm saw. Now strictly speaking the radial arm saw fence should be about four inches further forward and the blade should be buried past the um, past the fence um, but I didn't want to minimize the amount of uh, uh, material that I could put on here um, because um, you know I, I think it's a waste to what uh, to you know waste that amount of um, area so the simple thing to do, if you want to cut on here, I can either put a um, an extension to the fence on here, which is simply you get a board which you know is parallel, and you put up against the fence. You get your other piece of board that you want to cut, and uh, just do a quick demonstration here. So what this saw does, you pull it through the material and it leaves a nice clean finish. I shall just demonstrate that now. Nice clean cut. And not only that, a very, very square cut. I hope you can pick that up in the camera. That there is not a there is not a hair's gap there. That is absolutely square. And that's what we were after. Now, not only can we make a cut and as you can see it leaves a very very clean cut and very very little uh, frayn here um, but we can also push through thus And that's what the brake is for, you can see the brake. And look, it does a pretty good cut that way as well. And of course it's going to be... Oop, bit of a nick there. <laughs> and it's going to be just as square. No difference. A very parallel piece of, of wood it's taken off. So there is uh, two different ways that you can cut with um, the radial arm saw. Of course you can do the 45 degree mitres as well which are the very famous for. Uh, but also you can rip uh, material as well. Um, 
And I, I think I'll leave that for a, a, a another video because uh, ripping with this saw, uh, you've really got to be sure of what you're doing because you, you have to understand the direction of the uh, which way the blades turn in and uh, so in, in this example the blade is, blade is turning in a clockwise direction so let me just lift it slightly so if I wanted to rip it, do you know what I will rip a piece of material and I'll show you in this video so Okay, so we're 90 degrees there. And just say, for example, we want to rip a piece of material. Um, let's say, for example, 30 millimeter or thereabouts. There's a lock on this side where I can lock that up. I can bring the blade down. So it's just... near to touch it. Like so. And we will rip this piece of material. I'll just go and get a push stick. So this is ripping with a DeWalt radial arm saw. So it's all solid, locked up, so it can't move. Start. In actual fact, not only can you rip in that direction, but you can also rip a very, very wide plank. And uh, I haven't got one actually that size. Let's unlock this. and lock and if you can imagine a board that's oh let's get a tape measure and we'll measure it so this will take a plank or a board or a hunk of tree uh, let me see like 500 and 90 millimeters or 1 foot 11 inches and for a little 10 inch saw although it's got a, a 10 horse uh, sorry 10 2 horsepower uh, motor on it um, it, <laughs> it will do a big saw's job and that is what these are famous for and why I've, um, I've wanted one in actual fact So you have all these different adjustment controls and that's where it lives there. So there you are. That is a radial arm saw and um, some of the ways in which to use it and now you have some understanding of how to make 
and set up um, a pretty decent fence that uh, it'll give you a, a reliable uh, 90 degree cut and um, a very simple radial arm saw bench. So um, thank you for joining me for this video and uh, please pop in again to my channel. Uh, on this channel I do a lot of wood turning, uh, CNC uh, rotors, I have several CNC rotors uh, that I, I demonstrate uh, along with the programs like ArtCam and uh, Mark III. Uh, I also have a, a laser that I do demonstrations uh, on and show people how to to work with them and uh, a new segment coming up shortly uh, with um, CNC milling machines for steel and what have you. So thank you for joining me and uh, subscribe, press like and um, send it on to your friends. <laughs> Help my channel grow, that would be a, a fantastic uh, thing to do. So. Once again, thank you for, for uh, joining me, and uh, it's, as always, bye for now.